Hello and welcome to System Verilog in 5 minutes. Today we will talk about virtual interface. The syntax of virtual interface is very simple that it may not deserve a whole video, but I think it's interesting to know the background. This is an air conditioner. In the old days, it is controlled by a controller which is mounted on the wall and connected by wires. Later, the controller is made wireless and can control remotely. And most recently, you can launch an app in the smartphone to do the same thing. This is a hardware controlling another hardware. This is the same even though there is no wires involved. This is a software controlling a hardware. Make no mistake, the smartphone is a hardware, but the button is a software. It does not exist at all time, it only exists when the app is launched. To link it to system dialog, these two are like a module to module connection, and this is a class to module connection. These are not the real buttons, we generally call them virtual buttons. This concept is important to appreciate the simple syntax of virtual interface. This is a very interesting point to do a recap. If you follow the series, we've discussed about always block and initial block. We've talked about ratch, wire and the logic and then some data types such as enum, struct and string. We've talked about function and task and then fork, join, join any and join none. And then there is class, cover group and cover point and most recently we've talked about interface. The box on the left is generally synthesizable, which means that can be translated into a hardware design. Of course, that also depends on how you write the code. But anyway, all synthesizable code can be used in simulation. The box on the right is not synthesizable at all. They can only be used in simulation. And today, we're going to talk about the relationship between class and interface. This is an interface. It can contain a wire. This is a module, it also can contain a wire, and you're supposed to drive a wire with a continuous assignment. This is a class, it can contain an int or a logic, but can it contain a wire? The answer is no. If you look at the continuous assignment, it detects that the wire should exist at all time. Just like in real life, a wire is a wire, it does not appear suddenly just when you need it. So the wire carries a rather hardware-oriented concept. Class on the other hand is dynamic, you can instantiate it at any time, or you can choose not to instantiate it at all. This kinda contradicts the hardware nature of a wire. Following this logic, it is also understandable that class cannot instantiate an interface, nor can it instantiate a module. Now let's look at a basic test bench. This is an interface with a 3-bit wire. This is a module, it prints out the value on the wires. Let's pretend it's a design. This is a test, it derives the wires with a random value. This is a top level, it instantiates the interface, the design and the test. And there you go, this is a simple test bench. Now imagine if you have other tests, for example test A and test B. If you put all of them in the top level, they are not going to work because they conflict with each other. You can only instantiate one test at a time. That's kind of troublesome. It would be nice to have all of them there and we instantiate the one that we want dynamically. Well, that's exactly what class can do. Let's write a test with class. Let's assume it can contain an interface. It cannot contain an initial block, so we write a task to replace it. In the top level, we declare the class and then we instantiate it, and then we pass in the interface and we call the run task. This achieves the same effect as a module test. Imagine you have another test, test A. It's totally okay to include it in the top level. They don't conflict with each other because they are not instantiated yet. You can use an if-else statement to instantiate the desired test, which is not shown here. You can also run one test after another by instantiating them sequentially. All this if only a class can have an interface. And yes, it can. The only rule is you must use a virtual keyword to it. This is the same analogy from the virtual button. You may say that a module can be written in the same manner by using a task instead of an initial block. Why bother using a class then? Well, this example is too simple. Imagine a more complicated design with more parts and more protocols. We can use random variable, constraint, inheritance, and polymorphism to manage different variants of tests. Module cannot achieve that. In summary, a class can have access to an interface by using virtual interface. A real interface is passed into a class virtual interface by a top level. Next, we'll talk about program and scheduling semantic.